Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to the Blues of May 2015. Uh, first up, I'd like to give another shout out to Todd E. Walnuts. I recently did a, a video entry to his contest, which is over now. And if you haven't seen that video yet, or if you haven't heard of Todd yet, uh, please go subscribe to him. Uh, he's a very nice guy. He has an amazing collection. Uh, he has a lot of videos where he showcases his collection of various kinds of uh, uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. So definitely hit the link below and go subscribe to him. You will not regret it. Todd E. Walnuts. Check him out. Okay, let's start off with the Blu-rays. And the first one is the German media book of The Blob. This is the one with Steve McQueen. And this is a very, very nice release. Got the, uh, the, the Blu-ray here. A very nice artwork on the inside. And you can see this is the, uh, the classic scene in the, uh, the movie theater. I love the, uh, I love this version. But quite honestly, I kind of prefer the, uh, the remake. There's a poster of the movie, which, you know, it, it, it looks, it's actually a very misleading poster. Cause it looks like a, an action movie from the 1970s, if you look at this. But it is a poster of the blob, believe it or not. And here are the two sequels, and I actually never heard of this one, Son of Blob. I had heard of this one, but i never seen it before. And I've been told that it's not really worth seeing it because I, I heard it's quite bad. But I guess it's, this, this is quite bad as well because it kind of looks very bad. It looks very cheesy. Son of Blob. Never heard of it. This is another poster of the Blob. This is the Italian one. And again, it looks like a 1970s uh, action movie, you know. This is, of course, about the remake from 1987. Here's some uh, miniatures. I believe that they used for the original film. And here's the DVD. I got both the DVD and the Blu-ray inside. So excellent release from, uh, from Germany of the Blob. Here's another release from Germany. This is uh, from Housebound, which is a horror comedy from New Zealand. And uh, this is a, a uh, you can see that there, uh, sorry for the, uh, I cannot get a clear shot. You either see the lights or you see my bald head there. But you can see it is a lenticular cover. See that? Now you see him, and now I don't. I cannot really get a good look of that on camera I'm afraid so I'm sorry about that but I, I did not know about this release until I saw a video of Spawn7 um, another a great youtuber by the way I'll leave his link below as well uh, go check him out and go subscribe to him if you haven't done it yet um, yeah th this is a great release and also a great great film uh, you know there, there aren't many effective horror comedies, you know, where the uh, the funny parts are actually funny and the, the scary parts are actually scary. Um, An American Wave from London, of course, is a, a perfect example that of, of, of a great horror comedy. Uh, the Burbs is another great example, of course. But this, to me, also is it's a great one. I mean, it's... It is very funny and also very scary, and uh, I, I absolutely enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic, and um, even Peter Jackson said that it was bloody brilliant. So if you haven't seen this one, go ahead. It, I, I highly recommend checking it out. You will not be disappointed. Absolutely not. I really, really enjoyed this a lot. Housebound. Next is Electric Boogaloo, the wild untold story of Canon Films, which is of course a documentary about uh, the two guys behind Canon Films, 
Menachem Golan and Joram uh, Globus. Uh, you know, the two producers uh, from um, Israel who came to Hollywood and took over Canon Films and made all these, you know, kind of cult classic films in the 1980s. And, you know, I'm, I'm an 80s kid, so I grew up with these movies and I've always had a soft spot for Canon Films. No matter how bad they were, you know, they, they were just fun to watch. They still are fun to watch. And uh, this is a great, great documentary. Uh, absolutely enjoyed it. It was uh, directed by um, Mark Hartley, I believe, who is also responsible for um, Not Quite Hollywood, which is a documentary about um, Australian exploitation, you know, exploitation as they call it. And I also believe he did um, um, Machete Maiden, I believe, which is a documentary about... Uh, exploitation movies that were made in the Philippines, but I've never never actually seen that one, but uh, I, I do want to check it out one day. But this is this is absolutely entertaining. And if you if you, you know, love Canon films, definitely go check this one out. Uh, it has you know interviews of these uh, these people these actors for example, uh, Dolph Lundgren, Frank and Nero, Michael Dodikov, you know, from the uh, American Ninja movies. Which I I know there's the UK, there's a UK release of the first four American Ninja movies. I'm probably gonna get that as well. And of course, Masters of the Universe, He Man movie. I still need to get that one. But yeah, this is a great documentary. You know, if you if you love Canon films, definitely go check this one out. This is actually the second documentary about the Canon films. There is another one that was made by Golan and Glodus themselves, which is called the Go-Go Boys, which I haven't seen yet, but I do like to check them one out as well. Next up is the Peppa, uh, an Italian Western with Thomas Melian and Orson Welles. Excellent, excellent uh, uh, film, this one. And uh, you can see here, this is from the uh, Quentin Tarantino's top 20 spaghetti westerns. Um, if you'd like to know what this entire list look like, I will leave a link below uh, to a website where you can see, you know, check out his top 20. I don't know which number this uh, this movie is though, but I can tell you that number one is The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. That's really his all-time favorite film. But The Peppa is, is a great film, great ending as well. And uh, a great release from, uh, again, from Germany. I mean, Germans, I mean, they're, they're doing really, really good with these uh, with these releases. There's another one I like to get as well, Mercenario, or The Mercenary, with Frank and Nero. Navajo Joe, that's an excellent film. You can see an advertisement folder. And here's the uh, original poster of the Peppa. Really good film, this one. A great role by uh, Milian to Peppa. Great film. And there's another spaghetti western with Thomas Milian, uh, Django Kill. And I, you know, slightly enjoyed this more than the Peppa, to be honest with you, because this is a very strange kind of film. You know, it's a, uh, it's definitely not your typical uh, 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 film or, or typical uh, Italian western. But, um, yeah, it's good. This is a release from a, a Blue blue on the Ground, by the way. Wonderful transfer. Uh, very nice um, extra here interviews of the, with the uh, director, Giulio Questi, and Thomas Milian, of course. Good film, this one. Good film. Very strange, you know, very weird, but uh, very, very entertaining. Django Kill. Uh, this is the German release of For a Few Dollars More, which, of course, is a brilliant film by Sergio Leone. Uh, doesn't need any introduction. You know, the, it's the second movie of the Dollars trilogy, or the Man Without a Name trilogy, whatever you want to call it. But the reason I got this um, the German release is because this contains a, a minute of extra footage that are not in the other releases. And I actually did not know about that until uh, Kyle Shacker 65 
showed it in his video and, and you know, also told it uh, that it contains an extra minute. And, uh, and show, you know, I just needed to get it. You know, I just, uh, I guess Kyle and I are, are crazy enough to, uh, to buy this movie again just for that, you know, extra minute of, of footage. But, um, yeah, brilliant movie for a few dollars more. And there's another Spaghetti Western, also with Lee Van Cleve. Day of Anger, fantastic movie. Uh, very happy that uh, Arrow has decided to release this. Because for a long time, it was only uh, available on a Region 1 DVD, which I also have, by the way. And... Um, but but that one was you know sold out you know out of print and it, it went for crazy money, but uh, very very happy that Arrow has decided to pick this one or, or you know get the rights and release this film uh, because this movie really deserves a lot more attention than it's getting. You know it's 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 a great film, absolutely great film. If you haven't seen it and you like Italian uh, westerns, definitely go check this one out. Obviously, it comes with a, uh, a booklet. It has the, uh, the Blu-ray, two DVDs, and of course the uh, reversal artwork, which is nice, but uh, I really prefer the original artwork, which looks absolutely badass. But excellent film. Really, really good. And they're also going to release another Italian film, uh, which I think is it's great as well. It's called... Um, uh, Cemetery Without Crosses. Uh, it will be released very soon. Um, I, I had it on DVD as well, which is um, a wooden edition, also from, from Germany. Uh, but I'd love to get that on Blu-ray. And um, it's a film with George Hilton, I believe. Um, no, 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 not not George Hilton. Um, Hussein, Robert Hussein. And I believe he also directed that film, but um, yeah, I'll, I, will, I will be picking up that film as well. But anyway, excellent release of an excellent film, Day of Anger. And here's another Italian film, only this one is, um, uh, you know, a, a crime film from the uh, from the 1970s. Shoot First, Die Later by Fernando Di Leo. A look at that artwork, I really love that artwork. It is such a um, mind-blowing artwork. <laughs> yes, I think very, that's very appropriate to uh, to describe it. Uh, now, th the last film that I saw of uh, of DiLeo was uh, Rulers of the City, and that one really disappointed me. But uh, this is really, really good. This is definitely one of his better films. Um, yeah, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And also the ending. The ending is really good as well. Very dark. But, you know, and very un unexpected as well, but really, really good. Uh, and there's also a, um, a a car chase at the beginning of the film, which is uh, excellent as well. You know, these, these Italian crime films, they were very much influenced by the American uh, crime films from the 1970s. You know, you know, films like Dirty Harry and French Connection. And you can clearly tell, if you look at the, um, the car chase scene in this film... You can clearly tell that it was influenced on the car chase scene from uh, the French Connection. For example, uh, in the French Connection, there's this woman with the, um, um, what do you call it again in English, <laughs> baby cart. Is that what you call it? I, I, I think it is. I'm sorry if, 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 if I was wrong. But you see that room, woman with the baby cart and Gene Hackman almost hit her. And there's a similar scene in the car chase scene in, in this movie as well. But, um, yeah, excellent film. Shoot first, die later. Great one. And uh, great to release, by the way, by um, Rebo Video. I, sh I should be getting more um, Blu-rays from, from this company. They're doing very, very well. Next up is the rover, and the first thing you undoubtedly see is that I have another sticker residue problem, which I always like. But anyway, uh, this is a great, great film, by the way, um, from the director of uh, Animal Kingdom, which is another great film, uh, from Australia, by the way, this is also an Australian film, uh, it's a post-apocalyptic film. 
And when you think of an Australian post-apocalyptic film, you think of Mad Max, but this is, you know, entirely different than Mad Max. Um, yeah, great film. Uh, simple story. I mean, Guy Pierce plays a man whose car is being stolen by his brother, and then you know he's going to look for his car together with uh, with him. And um, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much the entire story. Uh, not a very strong story wise, but the way it looks, it, it's you know it, it's. Such a you know a great and at time uh, brutal film and excellent performance by Guy Pearce. I mean, I have never seen one bad performance by him in anything really. I mean, he's just such a great actor. And now I have to say, Robert Pattinson, he's really good as well. Um, I mean, we all know him from Twilight, and yes, he was bad in Twilight, but then again. Everyone was bad in Twilight, so that's just the material that was given to him. But uh, he's he's fantastic in this film. He, he really is. And they're both going to do another film together, which is going to be a Western um, directed by a Dutchman, Martin Kohlhofer, who also directed uh, Winter in Wartime. And he's a big fan of spaghetti westerns, and he also he, he always wanted to do his own Western and he's been working on it for years and years, and now finally he got you know the money together uh, to make it, and uh, he's going to shoot it very soon, and it will be coming out next year. And uh, you know these two um, will be in it, but also Mia Wasikowska and Karius van Houten. So I'm definitely looking forward to that one. But um, anyway, The Rover is is a great great film. Really liked it a lot. Uh, the next one is Massacre Gun. Um, I haven't seen this one yet, though. Um, but I wanted to get it before it. Yeah, you know, I, I was afraid that it might be sold out pretty soon because it's limited to three thousand. Um, you know, and also I. This movie stars Joe Shishido, and um, I have never seen one film by this man you know i've never seen branded to kill i've never seen youth of the beast so it's uh i, I have some catching up to do but um yeah i'm looking forward to, to this this looks really good i've seen the trailer and it looks like a a film that is really up my street massacre gun so very much looking forward to uh to check this one out Here's another release by Aaron, The Avengers of Buckaroo Banzai. I'm definitely going to get this one. Um, here's some artwork on the disc, which looks really good, by the way. And of course you got the uh, the alternative artwork work right here. Next is Dracula. This is the uh, the Hammer version with Christopher Lee and Peter Kiersing. A classic, undoubtedly. Uh, I got this for a really good price. I wanted to get this for a long time, uh, but I'm glad I got this for a good price. You know, I got two DVDs and one Blu-ray. They're all kind of <laughs> all of them had the same material, and there's. You know, a boatload of extra features that you can see here. Excellent film, Dracula. Glad to have this finally in my collection. And the next one is this beautiful steelbook of Kingdom of Heaven, the Ultimate Edition. This is from the uh, the UK, by the way. Very nice steelbook. And uh, this contains three versions of the movie. It has the theatrical version the director's cut and the roadshow version which is pretty much as you know, the same as the director's cut only it has the um, um, overture intermission and the um, you know the, the, the outro intro outro and you know those kind of stuff just like those uh, epic films from the 1950s and 1960s you know Spartacus, Ben-Hur, Lawrence of Arabia and, and such and uh, I've, that's that's really the, the version that I prefer, you know, the roadshow version. 
and um, I mean Kingdom of Heaven. It's it's I think it's a very underrated film. I think it's it's um, Ridley Scott's last great film. Uh, although I I have to admit I haven't seen Exodus yet, so I still need to uh, check that one out. But uh, yeah, the director's cut is really the one to check out. Uh, I think it's 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 a near perfect uh, film, really, um, and it looks beautiful. It looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, great film, and a wonderful release, Kingdom of Heaven. Uh, I I just received this one. This is the um, Dutch limited edition of a Dutch film called Michiel de Ruiter. Uh, Michiel de Ruiter was the admiral of the Dutch naval fleet who you know, managed to come up with a brilliant strategy to um, defeat the English and um, I've, I've never actually seen the film. I always wanted to check it out on the, uh, on the big screen but I just never had the chance so I bought this Blu-ray uh, um, digibook which looks very, very nice. And uh, here's the director, by the way, Roux René, who also did, um, um, what was it, Pistol Whipped, and um, Dead Race 2 and 3, and Dead and Tombstone, uh, The Man with the Iron Fist 2, you know, all those director DVD uh, or director Blu-ray kind of films that he worked on in the past 10 years. And also, between those films, he also worked on this film. Uh, here he is with uh, with Charles Dance, by the way, who we all know as uh, Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones. He plays a, a small but important part in um, in this film. And there's a portrait of the real Michiel de Ruiter. And there's the actor who's uh, playing him, Funk Lummers. It's a, a painting of the Battle of Kaikdown. Now the, um, I have to say this film is not historically correct, um, which is kind of necessary because you know they have to make it, you know, filmable. But the events in this film um, takes place within one year, while in reality, it t uh, it took place within thirty years. But, you know, it was just necessary to make those changes uh, to make it work as a movie. I mean, the same thing with the Kingdom of Heaven. You know, the, it's also not historically correct. Uh, for example, uh, Orlando Bloom's character, uh, Balin, I believe it's called. In the movie, he has, he has an affair with uh, Ava Green's character. But in reality, Balin had an affair with the mother of Ava Green's character. But those are just, you know, changes that needed to be made in order to uh, come up with, with a story that is appropriate for the movie, you know. And the same thing with, uh, with Michiel de Ruiter, of course. And here's some facts, by the way. For example, here are paintings from the 17th century were the inspiration for the design, you know, the, the look of the film. Uh, no green screen was used in the film, which is pretty much unusual though. There's a lot of visual effects in this film. The music was composed by Trevor Morris, who also uh, did the music for the Du Bois Vikings and the Tudors. And speaking of the, uh, the music, there's also the soundtrack as an extra on this uh, on the set, so that's very nice. And also a note from the from the uh, composer himself. So yeah, this looks really really good. I cannot wait to check this film out. And by the way, the um, the international title for this film is The Admiral, which is also the same title of uh, a Korean film that came out uh, recently. Uh, I've also pre-ordered that one, or pre-ordered, I ordered that one, it's already out. Um, but yeah, cannot wait to check this out, Michiel de Ruiter. And last but not least, I picked up 
this amazing release by Plain Archive of uh, Zero Dark Thirty, which is a magnificent film by um, Catherine Bigelow. You can see the uh, director approved artwork there of, uh, of Bigelow herself. This is the, um, the full slip version. Still shield, by the way. I'm gonna keep it that way for now. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, another wonderful release. This is um, this title actually glows in the dark, which is very nice. And I also picked up this one as well. This has the lenticular front, as you can see. Pretty much, you know, it's, it's the same steelbook that is inside this. Uh, package as well. You can see the uh, you can see the artwork on that. Very similar. And like this one, it this also uh, glows in the dark, and this glows in the dark as well. So very nice. And I, you know, I, I'm I'm actually glad I got I managed to get the these two uh, editions because they were sold out very quickly. They also had these um, bundles. You know that the four different versions of Zero Dark Thirty. These two and uh, two different ones. And they had these bundles, you know, one with all four editions and one with three editions. And they were sold out within a couple of minutes. I mean, I just, it was just unbelievable how fast they went. And, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to, uh, to have these. I cannot wait for the future releases of um, of playing archives they're going to release old boy as well and fox catcher so i'm very much looking forward to that and hopefully i might get a copy of those because you know you never know you have to be very quick to get them but anyway very happy with this with these uh, editions and that was it for my blu-ray update of may 2015 I hope you enjoyed it, thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon, bye.